Welcome to another episode of Noisy Talks with Friends. This will be episode, wow, 17. Clap it up, clap it up, 17. Um, today's guest. Oh, I'm sorry. If you're new to the channel, like and comment and subscribe. We are on our way to 1,000 subs. Uh, today's guest, people, um, is a very special person to my dear heart. Uh, someone that I am continually uh, inspired by because of their um, ambition, because of who they are. Uh, Words can't describe what this person means to me and who she is, and I'm just going to let her explain who she is. So, today we have... Hi, I'm Tanisha. Tanisha! (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Tanisha is my, uh, we call her my croissant, our croissant, <laughs> because she is our cousin aunt, but we will get there in a second. Yes. Um, Tanisha, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good. Are you nervous about I'm today? a little nervous, yeah. T- nervous, yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's very tough for people when they're not used to being in front of, like, you know, an environment of cameras and all that stuff, but that's where I try to make people comfortable with this, because, like, you're literally talking into a spatula, like... You're talking about, you know, my dad, my mom, into a spatula. So, you know what I'm saying? It just, I try to make people comfortable, but yeah. Uh, so, for, for, for those who don't usually tune in to the episodes, I do six questions with the interviewee, and they have no idea what they are, and they just have to answer. So, Tanisha, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get All into right. it. All right. Getting into it. Question number one. So, what people may not know is that you were adopted. Yes. Um, can you explain the process of your abdo- of your adoption and how you were raised in the family? Oh wow! So we're just gonna deep dive. Start right it off the right. Trauma. Okay. <laughs> so, um, my brother and I actually were adopted together. I was a newborn, and we're eleven months apart. So, uh, he was almost a year when we were adopted. Um, should I give the origin of why I was adopted? If you want if, to know, how, however, come to be, I, I don't know a lot about your story. I just know okay. that you were mainly adopted. So, like, yeah. Would just, yeah. So, um, our mother was a drug addict, so uh, she kind of lost custody of us. Um, at the time, there was five of us all together, but um, the my aunt, who we call mom, she's the one who adopted us into the family. She could only take two of us because she already had five kids of her own so it was a lot so she adopted my brother and I together because we were so young Um, and I was actually left in the hospital this is the story that they told me I was left in the hospital and I didn't have a name so the doctor gave me my name so my first name was just baby girl Jefferson and they had to locate my mother. They didn't know where she was because she just left me there. And they're like, who is this baby? It's just like a Jane Doe, you know. Um, and finally, when they found her, I don't know how long it took or how many days, you know, later. They were like, yeah, by the way, what do you want to name this baby? And uh, she says, Tanisha, Tanisha Marie. So that was my first birth certificate. And then the name changed, the spelling of the name changed. So I was Tanisha Marie Jefferson. And that's my adoption story jeez <laughs> um so like uh after your adoption mm-hmm. so now you're into uh, a, a new family i'll say right. a new family um what was your upbringing like like i've i've like i've known some stories like yeah. of course you know uh how we grew up together with you know with right. pj and our cousins and all that stuff right. But um, it gets confusing yeah. being adopted into the family. So my brothers and sisters are actually my cousins. My mom is actually my aunt. But, you know, I, I still see them as my sisters and brothers. And, you know, you guys are my cousins still. Um, uh, I don't think it really hit me that I was wasn't one of the siblings when I was um, in the family just because. They just did a really good job of integrating us into the family. Um, I guess there was this time where when I did realize that I was adopted, I was old enough to know, I guess I try to run away. This is what my mom tells me. I try to run away and I was like, I'm going to go find my real mom and I'm going to go be with her. And so she's like, go there, go, go ahead. She let me go down the street and I'm just looking around like, 
where do I go though? I don't even know yeah. where to look and where to start. So right. at that age, I, I didn't know what to do. And I was just like, I think at that moment, subconsciously, I just accepted it. And I was just like, this is going to be my life. This is going to be my family. Um, and then also subconsciously, I, I never really felt like I really belonged. So I kind of suppressed this feeling of never feeling like I belong, never feeling like I fit in, never really feeling like a true sibling, um, and just kind of feeling lonely sometimes. Sometimes it was, it was really lonely, even though we grew up with all, you know, all our cousins and we had a big family. And, and, and did, that, did that feeling kind of go further like into... Uh, schooling and like all that stuff too like how was that so, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to change the like, oh no but yeah so it it transgressed how it translated in my life later um, I didn't have the language for it um, but how it translated in my life later I was struggling with abandonment issues and I didn't know it actually didn't hit it didn't trauma usually doesn't surface until it's triggered by trauma so right. mine was right. activated by trauma right and I realized that I had very huge abandonment issues. So over the years, I would just be, I would, would kind of uh, duplicate it, I guess. So because I was abandoned, I would do the abandoning. Um, and I didn't realize that I was doing that. You know, I knew I knew my life. I was like, I'm, I'm never going to leave anyone because, you know, it was done to me. And it's just like, how could that be? And you kind of have this sense of, you know, not worthy, you know, you don't, you don't feel worthy, <laughs> you don't feel worthy of loved. So I struggled with that a lot. And it was, it was a deep hidden insecurity. Nobody really knew about it. Because when I was growing up, I kind of threw myself into being the good daughter, the, the perfect daughter, you know, I got really good grades. I was always on the Dean's list. I threw myself into sports. I was in every club and every activity. I was in leadership. I did so many things. I was national champion. So I was just, I, I strived to be this person all my life so that those things wouldn't surface and show. Um, and then I didn't want to go down a destructive path because I was just like, you know, you can go down a destructive path searching for your identity. So Yeah, and, and I think that's something even regular, I'm not going to say regular people, but right. everyone goes through yeah. just like really trying to figure out identity because we are just a bunch of people who are made by our trauma pretty much. Yeah. And like, you yeah. know, we kind of carry it into our adult life. And then like, that's something that I've said before is like, you know, we don't really realize how far that really goes. Cause you know, like you could be at a grocery store and see, you know, something on the ground and like you had to pick it up because if you didn't pick it up when you were younger, you would get beat because you didn't. Right. So it's like, you know, so it's like, it's like stuff like that, uh, really carries a long way. And then, um, Kind of going back to, to, to finish the question, to, uh, going back to like uh, your dynamic after you kind of felt comfortable with the family, like how was your, your upbringing with, with us? Oh, um, it, I think it was very pleasant. Like I said, I went through bouts of kind of just feeling alone and not understood or not really feeling like I fit in, but I kind of like made myself fit in. Um, and it was different between me and my brother because he grew up kind of just we we split ways after a while because he was searching for his identity too but he kind of always had this my parents are coming back for me thing you know so he was kind of always angry and kind of always just t subtracted himself he, he never wanted to integrate he never wanted to be a part of it so he was just like this you know you guys are temporary and to this day it's like that and i was just like i'm just gonna accept it so um, I just tried to be as normal as I could, you know, still acting like a sister, still acting, you know, as normal as I could be. And we had fun. Me and my cousins, we would do everything. It was still kind of a normal childhood. It didn't really get, it really changed after my mom got sick and I kind of switched into a caretaker role. So, um, it, it kind of took away my teenage years a little bit because I went into this nurturing caretaker role and it kind of changed my life drastically where I was needed a lot. So I guess, I don't know, does that answer the question? No, yeah. I mean, no, that, that answered perfectly. Um, just because like uh, one thing that I'm trying to do better of with getting to know, especially the family, like sp family specifically, is like everyone's upbringing because like I I know the fun parts I know right. the the block parties the the birthdays the Fourth of Julys the celebrations oh yeah. oh yeah so like I don't know how it was for 
every one of us. Because I, I mean, I mean, obviously, like we look at our our perspectives are, are, di- are all different. Right. So it's like I I always like knowing how it was, and like you know, um, uh, me, Precious, and Jonah will always talk about uh, like. Uh, you, you and you and Ijwin would like you know play like a whole bunch of games with us and all that stuff. But uh, knowing you guys personal, I guess was hard for me as a kid because like you can only understand stuff as a kid. Right. So like right. as an adult, it's really comforting for me to know that like you know I can just sit down and talk to you. So thank you right. for even being here. First of all, thank you for having uh, me. No, but seriously, um, it it, it truly means a lot because. I mean, we have conversations off call right, camera, so but it's never like, like deep. Like, yeah, you no, know. no, no. Yeah, so it 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 really hits home when I'm just like, oh, she wants to talk. Like, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So because I, I don't lot. think really, actually, I wouldn't say like I didn't. I haven't really got really close with anyone, so a lot of people really don't know. You know, a lot of the intimate, you know, details of my life. So it it'd be cool to share. Some yeah, things. and yeah, that, that that's something that that really sucked too because like. Um, even, even with my sister or my mom, like, you know, I, I know them, you know, whatever, but like when they came on here, then I got to like know right. them. I'm like, Oh, I had to relearn you guys. Came because like are, we, right. we grow every day. So I don't know, stuff like that. But, uh, that was question number one. Okay. Um, question number two, with you being such a free spirit, uh, and, or a nomad in a sense, oh, wow. how has life changed for you now being a mother and a wife? Okay. Um, I guess I should have said that. That that part was part of the first question. I did move around a lot, too. As yeah, a kid. yeah. So, like, yep. my whole life, I was always everywhere. I was traveling a lot from place to place to place. I never really settled in any area. So, after, you know, my traumatic experiences or whatever, and I, I decided to really settle down um, and do the marriage thing and have a child, I really settled in to the role of mother and wife. And I was just like, I have to be in one spot. You know, I can't be this nomad, as you say, this renegade. Like, I can't just be all over the place. <laughs> I, have to, <laughs> yeah. I have to settle down and, you know, hunker down and do this thing. So, and I'm, I'm the type to... I have to perfect my skills. I have to really hone in on something and really focus on, in on it. I'm 100% all in or nothing at all. So I really dove into it. And I love motherhood and I love being a wife. So, yeah. And, and, and do, do you, uh, I mean, obviously, like, um, do you feel like you kind of miss the traveling and all that stuff i mean you know regardless of the fact that you know you could do it one day but because you did it for such a long time is that something that you miss or that's something that you honestly no um because i think a lot of it too that whole me having abandonment issues was kind of i think yeah. it was part of the traumatic experience where i just felt wow. like i was always i had to be on the move i wow. always had to be from place to place to place and kind of just like running like i always felt like i was running really like i never really stopped because i was like i was running away from problems so i think it was part of that so i don't i don't miss it because i did a lot i did a lot of the traveling like everything that i wanted to do i did it you know, in my in my younger days, so you know, now just being a mother and a wife, it's like I'm good with that, and I'll travel with my family. And that's yeah, great. right. And like, uh, how how big uh, are um, how much discipline did you think that you had to gain for you to be? A mother and a wife because now you know you're traveling everywhere and you have to uh, kind of find your identity but now you have a, a daughter right and you're a wife so it's like right. now you have to be disciplined right. to to family first to she needs this and had to be a good wife like how has that discipline changed in you if that makes sense at all no that does make sense okay. um but i i i would say um motherhood one you have to have a lot of patience so that was not anything that I ever had before so (laughs) I had to change that about me just to be patient that was a hard lesson to learn Um, but relationally just in my marriage um, having a husband I think you know growing up when I had to take care of my mom and 
and going into the caretaker role and being a nurturer, that kind of just all fell into place. Everything that I was when I was younger, it kind of helped me be that. So I was kind of already disciplined and taking care and serving and and ministering to others. So the way that I serve and I'm there for my husband in the same way I'm there for my daughter, it was already kind of in me. It's just now it's just like just more patience with things is the only thing i really have to work on <laughs> yeah yeah and i think i think everyone does because it's like you know we especially nowadays like we see how quick everything is uh accessible um and we think that you know people just grab it and now it's just theirs you have to obtain discipline and um really work at your ability and your gift um with everything that you're doing right. it, it could be as simple as whatever but i think patience is something that we all still have to learn um, especially because of the type of society uh, we are in, because society is starting to go downhill, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, patience is something that we all still have to learn every day. Right. Um, but going to your, because um, you said something about uh, service, so that goes into yes. question number three. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I've always admired is your service to people. Uh, where did that come from, and why is it so important to you? Um. I think it's important to me because it's one of my gifts. Um, one of my gifts is helps and hospitality and and just serving people and helping people. That's something I'm really passionate about. I don't know if you know that I did missionary work for two years. That, that was my second question, but I, I didn't know uh, if you were, <laughs> if you wanted to talk about that. Oh but yeah, 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 I can yeah. talk about that. But um, so it, it it really came from again just taking care of my mom, taking care of my family, and doing things like that it was just something that was always in me just very passionate about helping like i just have a heart for people and like uh, because uh you i mean you see how how our family is like you know like we always uh help other people and all that stuff and like um do you think that because oh i think you just answered that you said because you were a caretaker um okay so you kind (laughs) of answered that because i i think that's something that I am starting to take on a lot more is kind of being a caretaker, uh, not of a person, but of the family. Cause I want to be an example to just talk. Um, and I feel like that is an, an act of service because people don't communicate and I feel like communication right. goes such a long way. Um, and that's something that I am trying to break in our family is communication. Cause right. again, like all I really know is the celebrations and all that stuff. So right. to hear, you know, people went through people went through stuff. I'm like, you right. did. I, I saw you were smiling at Easter Sunday, and right. you know what I mean. So it's like I, it sucks to for me that I feel like I only know, like or or, or only remember you smiling, or only right. remember Grandma smiling. You know, it's like stuff like that. Like we so. only knew the kid versions of and each that other. Sucks. And like and that there's sucks. there's so much of my adult life that like a lot of the family has no idea about. Right. Right. You know. Um. Yeah, I mean, you answered that. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say about that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, something I wanted to share about my adoption story that I think would just really help people, um, whoever is struggling with, you know, those abandonment issues, and to kind of just put an end to it because you recreate the life. You don't mean to recreate it. You don't mean to live out the things that happen to you, but it kind of just happens. You know, um, or you go down a destructive path searching for your identity. One of the things that um, hurt me was when my me and my brother kind of split ways. And when he went down the destructive path of searching for his identity, and I kind of wanted to just keep this, you know, persona of having it together. And deep down I was hurting and it didn't surface until later. I remember him calling me one day um, in our adulthood we haven't talked for years you know he went away from the family he left the family and kind of abandoned the family and um he called me out of the blue and you know he was on you know drugs or uh whatever and uh he was cussing me out and we just you know whatever and i hung up the phone i'm just like whatever but there was something that he said to me he's like 
Tanisha, you need to stop running. You're going to have to stop running one day. I'm like, where did that come from? Like, you don't know me, bro. Like, get out of here. You do, you haven't seen me in years. What are you talking about? Like, you know, and, and, and later it like stuck with me. I'm like, why did he say that? Why would he say something like that? And I realized that all my life I had been running from something. And that's why I traveled so much. And I hopped from place to place to place. I never said, I know I never settled anywhere after I turned 18 and left the house and I went to college. Um, I never really settled down anywhere and I kind of just, you know, um, recreated that, um, what was done to me, I felt was so cruel and I never dealt with the hurt. I never dealt with the pain of being abandoned and being left and having these thoughts of not being loved and not being worthy enough or not being, you know, loved enough to where someone would want to keep me. Someone would want to, you know, so struggling with that, you know, and if I could reach out to my brother because I think his struggle was greater and I, I tried to look like my struggle wasn't as great, but in a sense we had the same struggle and we were hurting in the same way and I could never express it to him. If anyone could understand me, it would have been him because we had the same thing. But again, his mindset was always, my parents are coming back for me, you know, and I, I accepted it. I really accepted it. And I was just like, I don't think they are though. But the way that I lived my life, I was kind of self-destructing destructing from the inside out, but no one saw it. No one saw the hurt. No one saw the pain because I had to have this persona of just like, you know, I don't have any insecurities. I don't have any hurt. I don't have any pain. I'm not running from anything. What are you talking about? Like, and then later, you know, after trauma hit and I kind of just had to face, I had to confront this hurt and I had to confront the struggle because I was in a relationship that ended in the same way of cruelty and abandonment you know, on my end. And I was just like going down this destructive path of burning bridges and just abandoning wherever I saw fit. And it was just reckless, you know, but me still trying to convince myself that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. And I never really connected with anybody because of that, because of that hurt, because of that abandonment. I never was able actually to receive love also because of it. So I could never have a deep relationship with anyone and I, I didn't realize why I could never put language to it I could never explain like why if anyone got close to me I would push them away or I would just you know like no I, I can't do this so I was so destructive and I was abandoning and I was cruel and I was but I didn't know what I was doing you know and I wasn't confronting that hurt but if I was to say anything to anyone who's searching for that identity and just looking to be loved or to belong somewhere. You know, I would tell my brother, I stopped running and you can too. I stopped running and you can find yourself. And that's what I would tell him. And I hope other people can understand that too. You can be loved and you are worthy of love, no matter what. I would say that. So yeah, that got deep. You need to eat some <laughs> no, good. Do yeah. you do anything? Yeah, I'm good. Um, a tissue, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but what I what I wanted to say is you also so nothing is your fault. So let's start there. Nothing is your fault, but you do also have to understand the the family that you the family that you are adopted into. Right. So we don't show emotion and like that. No. This is this is going to get deep too because I've always felt that we never actually love each other. We love each other as. Oh, you're my cousin? Okay, right. I love you. Right. Oh, you're my nephew? Okay, I love you. Right. But the fact that we don't know each other, right? There's, the, uh, to, in my knowledge, there's no love there. Because we're, we're so easy to, to, to cut each other off. Right. We're so easy to, to not talk to each other. And it's like, that's why I made my, woo, I made myself, Tanisha, only remember the happy stuff right. because nothing else <laughs> can be bad. That's trauma response. <laughs> That's my trauma response. Oh, you smiled. Right. Remember, remember you smiled that one time? And it just always felt so happy. There was parties. Right. It was a block party right. every day. Exactly. And like that. Yeah. And like, but yeah. And I think that's why we have such a, a struggle because again, we carry it from such a young age yeah. to now. Because now it's like, what do I have to do? But running away. Running we, away. We, we do run away from our trauma, our, our problems or whatever and we wouldn't deal with it because we weren't taught how 
Exactly. No one given the resources, and and there was no one there who was open, who's like, talk to me on this level. It was all surface level, or, you know, just very invalidating and dismissive. Yes. Of any kind of feelings. And, and, and that's so. Uh, recently, uh, our family we went on a on a family vacation uh, to a a, camp, a campsite. And I made sure I was like, there is all of us at one place in this one time where we're all going to be together. So I made sure to go out my way to make individual letters for everyone, letting them know this is where our relationship is. And we can either I know on my part, I'm going to do my part. Right. It's on you as well. Right. It's on you as well. Right. So I, I'm not going to continue to go out of my way to be like, hey, I love you. Even though we're all in a, in a family group chat and I'll say, hey, guys, I love you like randomly. But it's still on you to either respond or to build a relationship to reach out. So it's like, I don't know what that feels like, but I can see it from a different perspective. Right. Um, and that's why, because like I, uh, it sucks to see how, I, I think that goes into the, the next question, um, but I'll get there in a second. Okay. It sucks to see how uh, black families damage each other so quick and we just so we're so forgetful if if something happens between us that's it until we die we can't build a relationship we can't like why can we never jump over that hurdle right. and then we and then we have to live through it the rest of our lives rest there's no way lives. that we can be like hey, suffering in silence come on <laughs> come on nobody knows no one hurts. understands that so right. it's like to hear um your story tanisha thank you because you didn't even have to talk about it, but thank you. Um, and that goes into, because now we're on question four. Uh, so question number four is, um, what can we do better as a black community and what areas do we lack in? Um, and obviously, like, you know, it, it's broad, but something right. that's specific to what you think. I just want to hear I mean, I think you spoke on it. Communication is key. Having the hard conversations. I mean, you, you saw with um, our family how these talks have helped the older generation realize some things that either bring them to a wall where they're just kind of confronted with something and, you know, and then they have to deal with all the negativity and they'll either accept it and come along with it or they're going to be left behind. If they're going to have the conversations or they're going to shut down and shut off. So those who are willing to learn from the younger generation, learn from what you're trying to do, see that it's not you're not trying to hurt. You're not trying to destroy. You're not trying to break down. You're trying to build up. You're trying to break down walls and having the hard conversations. And and then also um just like just like with us, I, I've just come to a thing. It's just like even if, you know, the people who have done those things in our lives that has caused us trauma, even if they're not even willing to reconcile or willing to even apologize, it starts with us, right? We still have to be willing to forgive and we still have to be willing to confront ourselves in the mirror and say, you know, speak to that the little girl, like, I got to speak to the baby girl T and say, you know, you are loved, you are worthy, you're not going to continue on doing the things that was done before you or was done to you for generations and generations, you know, um, because that, that's what it was in, in my family. My real mother, it was the same with her. Her mom abandoned her. She left her in one way, shape, or form. And then her mother did it to her. It's just like, it's it was generational. And it's just like, that could be me if I'm not willing to face it. Right. So communication and, and, and you yourself having to do the work. And, and, and now you're a mother and a wife. Right. So it's like you... I'm not going to say you. No, you don't have an excuse to run away because now but she's looking at it. you every day. I struggle she's looking still at you. with. Yeah. Him. Um, you know? Yeah. And like, uh, I think that's very important because we don't really understand how it affects in real time. Right. So it's like if something happens to us, then again, we have to just carry it on. Just no one wants to carry it. it. And that's why I started doing these talks, because it's like. Why? Why is my back tight? Why am I feel like I'm carrying all this weight right. w with whatever's going on within the family? And I, I had to break it. And this is a platform where I knew that I could break it because if you can, if you can talk about it, especially with everyone watching, if you can talk right. about it and you can understand here and have them understand, then we're moving forward. Then we're progressing. Right. But for you to 
face it and be like, oh, nah. Yeah. And you rather just complete die with denial. it. Complete denial. That's complete error. And you have to see that before yourself and before right. God. So it's nothing like. Nothing will ever change. Nothing will ever change. So it's like, I, I, I'm encouraging everyone to really put yourself in a position with your family and have the, I don't care if it's uncomfortable. I don't care if it's right. please just sit your family down and just talk to them. If they can't face them, if they if they argue, love them where they're at. Don't try to uh, force them to you know see the other side. Right. If they, if they want to see the other side, they'll see it through you. They'll right. see wow, my grandson, my gr- right. uh, you know whatever is sitting down talking to me about a, a problem that he has, rather than oh he thinks he's big now. Oh he thinks he's right. no. You have to express it in a way where you don't feel like you're or uh where you feel like that you're not trying to be superior right. over somebody it's just conversation right. we're all neutral we're all the same just talk but if you have anything else to add no that's it okay okay uh yeah so people do better um <laughs> question wow what what five one two three four did i give you seven questions oh wow i think i gave you seven on accident but uh question number five um kind of changing topics and all that stuff um so you have a phenomenal husband and how you guys blend and your dynamic uh do you think that it's important uh for a healthy marriage to be to be modeled in our community meaning the black community oh for sure um, but, uh, certainly because so many of us grew up without having that dynamic model to us. So we don't know. We go into these relationships. I've had so many failed relationships because I didn't know. It wasn't modeled to me. So I had nobody to look to. I had no example of what, what love looked like. Or you have, or you see other marriages. Yet they've been married 20, 40 years and they're unhappy. They're not t- talking to each other. They're like roommates. There's no love there. Um, so to go out into the world i'm not saying be this power couple or whatever but to model just loving each other like it's huge we me and my husband thomas we try to do it in front of our daughter so much just just showing that we love each other like affection is okay like and doting on each other and words of affirmation and building each other up and we do so many things together we serve together like at the family function we we cook together we just do things together so other people and the other people see like you know they work together they're not like in the kitchen fighting and stuff but they're working alongside each other and you know where he's strong I'm weak where I'm weak he's strong so we use that and people People see that dynamic and they're like wow you know there's something different about that but for other people to see that modeled I think is important not only that it's inspire them like they're actually healthy relationships out there or it gives them hope but it, it also just serves an, as an example period that you know there are there is love to be had and you are worthy of love again that whole thing that <laughs> so, is the message of today right. people you are worthy of love I think everyone does need to understand that um especially with like uh uh, before before you jump i don't want to say jump but before you try to prepare yourself for a relationship understand where you are where you are at first right um a lot of people they will meet you where you are and i'm not saying perfect yourself for somebody right but understand where you're where you're at in your life um before you get in a relationship yes. because uh a lot of people can uh enhance or what we're looking for um not enhance they can show you how to love yourself am i is that what i'm trying to say hmm Basically, what I'm saying is, people, just uh, <laughs> understand where you're at in your life um i was going somewhere but i lost it pretty fast uh <laughs> Yeah, let's go to question number six. Uh, <laughs> question number six. Um, so I do. Ha- I actually do have seven questions. Okay. Um, but I am gonna do six just because okay. I, I I did say six. Okay. Um. Oh wow. So you and I have always talked about um, breaking gener- generational curses within our own family. Do you think we as a whole? on the right path 
or what needs to be challenged for us to for us to be where we need to be hmm Um, that's a hard question. Because uh, I, I think it just goes back to communicating. And But what needs to be challenged is, you know, confronting the issues head on. Um, but like you said, not doing it in a projecting way, not doing it in a way that is just like, oh, I'm better than you. But um, where you see the hindrances where you see the blocks like if you are able to recognize what the block is confront it like if there is someone that you know isn't you recognize there's unhealthy behaviors or unhealthy things like confront it um but in a gentle way and in a way that the other person can understand you mean like in our family right yeah within our family yeah within yeah. our family there there's definitely dynamics there's different dynamics that we need to challenge um and confront or there's there's behaviors or there's language that can just be like kind of damning and people don't realize it they don't realize hey that was invalidating to me like you yeah, you just dismiss like you know hey that kind of didn't make me feel you know whatever and hey can we talk about that so like when you see it right away don't shut down don't squirrel away but right away confront like hey what was that all about i don't understand that but i kind of want to move forward with whatever i do want to grow in this and i do want to stop you know with the blocking and putting up walls and and continuing on damaging behavior so right when you see it confront it and not be afraid of it you know and just just ask the hard questions oh my god so i yes. think that's what needs to happen in our family for sure is just ask the hard questions and understand where they're coming from be willing yes be willing to understand that man um I mean, if you want to elaborate, I thought, did you have something? I, I was just going to say, yeah. this, you know, sometimes it's it's just an unwillingness. Like, I think where we're challenged is um, the work our to, generational to do thing. Yeah. So the younger generation, the older generation is like some are willing, you know, to kind of relent. And then some are others are just like there's a lot of pushback. There's a lot of they have to deal with their own personal issues before they can have those hard conversations. But maybe even just going as far as asking like hey what what will allow us to move forward what will allow for this relationship to grow and and being willing to be like i'm willing if you're willing you know if not then it is it has to be what it is i don't i don't hate you i don't love you any less <laughs> right right but it, still loving them no yeah for it. sure for sure and i, I think uh basically just pick, to piggyback um working at it like i think i think what scares and again, not talking to everybody, my family, I think uh, what scares us are the fear of actually working through it, because I think when the problem or the situation is up front, then it's like, oh, well, if we step over this, then we're going to touch and touch right. subject, t- touchy subjects. And that's the point of it is to right. confront it. So I think we have to break that wall, break the fear, of break it. the fear of just working at it. Cause like, you know, how else do relationships work? But then Tanisha, it goes back to how is it modeled to us? Right. How is it modeled to them? Right. So it's like, if they were never modeled, how are we ever going to break through that? But again, right. that's, that it has to be challenged. Um, I think that trip was a good start. Just it was like a good start. Doing something as a family. I think that was a good start. I think it was a very good start. Uh, but that is all the questions that I have, Tanisha. This is the segment where I give the interviewee a chance to ask me one question and one question only. So if you have one, go ahead. Oh, wow. If you don't, we can, you know, we can start, stop, whatever you want to do. It can be a personal question. If that's what you, I will answer yes. Because I, I we always wondered um, about your relationship with your father and how it's impacted your life. So, me and my father's relationship was very hard. Um, him and I had a had a conversation. I wasn't gonna say a fallout, but we didn't fall out. We had a conversation uh, recently when I was in Minnesota. Uh, cause I went there to, to do an internship with Hulu, shout out Hulu. That was really fun. Um, and there was, cause I'm close with a lot of other family members there and I wasn't really close to my father. So like stuff that I would say to them, they would say to him, but he never told me. 
So one day, you know, um, before I go, whatever I'm about to do, he was like, we're going to have a talk today. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, we had the talk and it was basically understanding each other's perspectives. So in his on uh, through his perspective, he did all he could as a dad to come see me um, because. OK, so for people who also don't know, because maybe I should break it down even more. Um, my dad does live in a different state. Uh, we both live in different states. So he lives in Minnesota. I lived in Ohio. And like sometimes he would go to North Carolina or Minnesota. So either way, you know, we're in two different states. And and through his perspective, he saw it as he did all he could as a father because he thought about me uh, when he got the time to see me. He did um, when I or before I was born, he made sure to, to set up. Um, what is that stuff called? What is that called? You work at it. Child support, yes. Uh, so I was thinking about it. <laughs> My bad. Uh, he set up child support, all that stuff. So like through through his lens, he did what he could as a father. In my lens, I had to grow up without you there present at all. Regardless of the fact I had time with you, you weren't there with me every day. I go to school because I, I went to a lot of predominantly white schools. I went to school where their dads. Uh, where my friends dropped off their dads, where the dads were there at their sporting events, where they were there coaching them on the sideline, where they were there, you know, wherever, whatever you can think of. And I had to learn how to be a man through my friends or through my uncles or through my mother. So getting all those different dynamics, all those different perspectives, I never truly knew how to be a man. And in some cases, I still don't because... I've never had it modeled. So it's like, uh, I do have people who I look up to, like um, my Uncle Chauncey. Uh, let's just say him for now, because I can say a lot of people. My Uncle Chauncey, um, because that's someone who was, you know, there all the time. Like, I could go talk to him. I could look at him. I could smell him. Like, you know, weird stuff, right? Uh, but because my father wasn't there i near me or presently near me i always felt like i never knew him so then when we got to the to the place where i had to know his story i'm like oh that's why you're the way you are confronting the situation um and it, it got to a point where we did cry very hard and we had to hug it out <sighs> we had to hug it out and we each said i'm sorry and that was something that was very hard because it's like you you only feel like you're doing your best through your lens. You never understand from the kid's perspective or from, you know, opposite. So um, but we are in a, a fantastic uh, place now um, with uh, with with each other, with our relationship. Um, so, yeah, I think that's something that has been very challenging, uh, you know, Especially with like, should I even say that? Especially with uh, how my mom is, because my mom is a single mother and she really wants a marriage. And don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you do it. I'm not crying. My mother really <laughs> My mother really wants a marriage so she can be loved. And because um Dang it, Tanisha, why'd you start crying first? I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> because because of uh the different uh, the the different dads that, that me and my sister have, my mom has really never been able to find love for herself. So she has always been a mother, even to this day. And I have always, whew, come on, <laughs> come on. I have always felt that. <laughs> Stupid. Wow. wow. <laughs> I have always felt that if I were to get relationship, it would be throwing in my mother's face. And wow, <laughs> that's wow. why. Wow, wow. <laughs> no. 
that's why I've always, uh, I've always <laughs> not talked to or have played a lot of females wow. when I was younger. Wow. Um, because I'm like, well, I can't, if I bring you to my mom, she'll never understand it because she, she's not where she wants to be. And I feel like I've held off a lot. Wow. Uh, because I want to see my mom happy first. I want to see her get married first. Why do I? Why do I deserve to to model something that she's always wanted? So wow, wow, wow! <laughs> it um, it is very tough uh, with the relationship as a uh, with with my dad because it's like, why didn't you love my mom? Oh wow! 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 Wow, wow, wow. So, father figure is very hard. Uh, wow. But our our relationship is good. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, I always, uh, I always uh, try to express my love to mom, to my mom, or to our mom, Precious, as, uh, as a son, because I can never show it as, uh, the man she sees wow. um because like one thing that that like uh that really hurt as a kid was she never had uh, like like pictures of us like you know just in the house you know i'll go to my friend's house there's pictures everywhere but then i'm like oh is it because you don't feel complete without a man there so i'm like maybe she didn't have pictures of us because in her mind this wasn't a, this wasn't a complete family so it's like why would i put that up because you know you go into other people's house oh your husband's there your your daughter's there but in, in her mind man i wish i had so yeah uh i know i went to a completely different side of people no, but no. that's something that i need to get off my chest wow. <laughs> but, you should ask the lighter question <laughs> right but this has been another episode um. <laughs> This has been another episode. No, but serious people, um, I, I really want you guys to to challenge yourselves to just be open, because uh, that this was something that has been on my heart for the longest time, but I've never been able to just talk about it. So I challenge you guys. First time, it took you seventeen episodes to see me cry. Dang it! Uh, <laughs> but um, I I really challenge you guys to just sit down and talk to your family. Um, I want to continue to uh, extend my whatever to tanisha because she is such a great person i don't know what where, where i'm looking for people no, you are <laughs> but uh because she is such an inspiration with who she is her acts of service her her modeling her motherhood um her now being a wife Thank you. it's like it's something that is very inspiring so tanisha please keep doing what you're doing um do you have any closing remarks before i no i i think you are doing a great job okay. you really are doing an amazing job and you're the inspiring one I, I know i just texted you this last night but i was just like it's beginning with you and you're doing such a great work and i'm so happy and i'm, I'm i just can't wait to see what god is going to do and continue to do through you so thank you thank you for having me well guys <laughs> <laughs> This has been another phenomenal episode of Noisy Talks with Friends. It is Noisy and Tanisha, and we are out. Explain that experience on how you were brought up as an only child. Um, and on that same note, because you didn't have any siblings, how hard has it been uh, not being able to reach out to people who aren't just your friends?